This video is my personal opinion on a very complex topic. The year is 2013 and 3D printing is exploding in popularity due to the expiration of several key patents and a fervent interest by the media. Despite being around since the 80s, people are convinced that 3D printing will bring forth the next technological revolution, Industry 4.0. From spare parts and household items to entire houses, we'll be 3D printing everything in just a few short years. There's just one problem. They currently look like this. Wooden laser cut boxes you assemble yourself and they cost over $2,000 to boot. They barely function, requiring hours of calibration and constant tweaking. The RepRap movement brought around a renewed interest in 3D printing and made it accessible through open source designs. But it was more about the experience, the learning, the movement itself. You had to be pretty dedicated to build a 3D printer from scratch using open source plans. Clearly then, there was a fantastic opportunity to create a 3D printer for the masses for the consumer. A product that was both easy to use and easy on the eyes and affordable. The team behind Pirate 3D certainly thought so, so in May 2013, they released this. The Buccaneer. A sleek, easy to use 3D printer with its own ecosystem of ready to print models and it was only $397. The Pirate 3D Buccaneer took the tech community by storm and raised almost one and a half million dollars. Except this wasn't a pre-order. This product didn't exist. This was a Kickstarter and it failed. Crowdfunding has a diverse history with the most well-known platform being Kickstarter launched in 2009. It was founded as a way for creators to fund their ideas by going straight to the source, their fans. A look at the homepage in 2009 shows this mission working well, funding a new documentary, reuniting a band, even rehousing a collection of vinyl records. The funding goals are modest and no deliverable is hardware. There's no new cutting edge products or promises. In fact, it doesn't appear that hardware projects really started taking off until 2013 with well-known campaigns such as the Three Doodler and our Pirate 3D Buccaneer here. Crowdfunding was a new and exciting way to get access to cutting edge products for cheap. The catch, at least on the surface, was that you just had to wait a little while to get it, but you'd be part of the journey on the way. And while this approach works fantastically for projects with a low or at least known overhead, like events and documentaries, it turned out to be seriously flawed for funding hardware projects. Let me explain. I used an Australian crowdfunding website, Possible, to fund several combat robot events. These events had an overhead cost which needed to be covered for the event to go ahead. Things like venue hire, arena transport, insurance, all well-known amounts, and I could set a campaign goal to reflect that, making sure to add the extra 10% or so fee on top of using the platform, and then a little bit extra for MISC, the unknowns. Now, these were tiny campaigns compared to most, but they delivered all the same. People came to the event and had fun and we were done. Now imagine instead of a combat robot event, it was a campaign to sell a robot, a new physical tech product. You've built your prototype required by Kickstarter, but not all crowdfunding platforms, recorded a swish and probably expensive video to sell it, and you're off. It's a runaway success and you've raised millions of dollars towards your campaign. Congratulations, you now get to mass produce that product and send it to thousands of backers all around the world. Problem is, many creators of crowdfunding campaigns are enthusiastic and usually quite entrepreneurial, but tend to lack the industry experience to properly budget for and plan the production of mass-produced, technologically complex products. But you can't even start planning your next step until you give that juicy cut to Kickstarter or Indiegogo or whatever. As far as they're concerned, their job is done. Then you have your bank fees for moving that much money around. And then just maybe if you don't completely fail, you have to pay tax. Yes, they do say that in general, in the US, funds raised on Kickstarter are considered income. This is of course assuming your campaign will be left with a profit and not in, uh, in ruin. Going back to the Buccaneer, there's no question that the concept was successful. People clearly wanted it. 
However, sadly, the team quickly discovered that bringing a product like this to market just isn't the same as producing a few prototypes and making a flashy video. With so much promise from a complex electromechanical project to a fully fledged cloud app, that money drained fast. The promised delivery date of February 2014 quickly came and went and things went south quickly and people were furious. After countless updates, a final 2015 message seals the fate of the doomed ship. Roughly 40% or so of machines were supposedly delivered and a side effort of selling machines direct to the public and not those who had already pledged, yeah, failed dismally as well. Go figure. Actually, that's how I got hold of this machine. It was sent to an Aussie reseller in an attempt to butter them up to stock them, but they obviously said no because they hadn't delivered to the backers. Their website is now dead, as is their app, and considering that there's no way to physically connect to the machine, you have to use the app, that means that this printer is dead too. So, did Pirate3D and countless other campaigns set out intentionally to swashbuckle backers for millions of dollars? For some, possibly, but not in this case. At least, I don't believe so. For all its faults, you can see that serious money has gone into the research and development of this machine. Remember, this was at a time when almost nothing was standardized in the 3D printing community. You couldn't just buy mass-produced control boards from China for cheap. Almost everything else in the machine is in-house designed. The housing would have been injection molded, it's plastic, not metal. The internals ride on linear slides bolted to laser cut sheet metal. Even the spool has Pirate 3D injection molded into it. I think this was with eSun as the partner, but still, that would have cost a lot of money. That's not what someone does when they're trying to just scam someone. With all that considered, it's no surprise they failed to deliver this machine for under $400 to their backers. The bill of materials alone would have been more. So it sits here and I've removed all the useless internal electronics. So it's just a bare bones system. And maybe one day I'll get it up and running again as a monument to crowdfunded failure. I would oh so love to say that this is the only spectacular failure in the 3D printing crowdfunding space, but alas, it's not. The Peachy printer raised Canadian $650,000, had much of its funds embezzled to build a house for the co-founder, and it never shipped. Then in 2015, Tico, a $179 machine, promised, raised almost $3 million from over 16,000 backers only to run out of money a few short years later and fail to deliver more than a few buggy beta testing units. And just like Pirate3D, they only worked using a now non-existent cloud slicer. So those are all dead as well. Oh dear. But let's step back for a minute. It's not all failures, not at all. These are just some of the crowdfunded 3D printer projects that went on to not only deliver, but evolve into fully fledged companies. Now, not all survived long term, unfortunately, but they did still deliver and they still deserve serious praise for holding their promise when so many others failed to do so. We're now in 2019 and crowdfunded hardware projects are still pretty dang popular. And it's within my interest that you don't lose your money. In my experience, it's the low price campaigns that attract thousands of backers that are the ones that tend to collapse. Ono and Obsidian I have my eyes on you, please don't make me add you to this list. Similarly, while a new revolutionary idea from a bright individual might sound amazing and promising, there are so many roadblocks when it comes to getting that cutting edge idea into production that almost always the money isn't enough and the time frames are woefully optimistic. Crowdfunding is not a pre-order, it never was, and while there can be incredibly cool things on it, I will always be sure to stress that, should you back a project, it's little more than a donation. There is no promise you'll get anything, and Kickstarter has made it clear in their terms that their hands are clean should a project go south. If you're still okay with that risk, go for it. I have, several times. Just please, stop trying to make Kickstarter refund you. It's not happening, guys. Just walk away. To end on a positive note, crowdfunding tech isn't dead. In fact, there's a vibrant community of crowdsourced open hardware over on Crowdsupply, which has really established itself 
as a viable platform for funding the creation of really neat products. Full disclaimer though, I've never backed anything on Crowd Supply personally, and they certainly didn't have anything to do with making this video, but I think it's neat that you have to actually apply to have your project launched on their platform, and they ask you all of the hard questions up front to make sure it's viable and you actually can deliver. I don't believe they've ever had any projects fail to deliver. I could be wrong, but still, it's worth checking out. As always, I'll keep my eye out for new products coming up and I will do my best to keep the 3D printing community informed. If you enjoyed this little look back in history of crowdfunding failure, then maybe consider subscribing. It's my aim on Makers Muse to empower your creativity through technology and I'd love to have you on board. Thanks for watching guys, bye.